Welcome to Cal TV News's uh, second installment on Offscript, where we talk about behind the scenes stories from in the field. My name is Tomas Maglonga, one of the co directors of the news department. And today we have a full slate of reporters, a handful of them with us uh, Paulina, Anna, Perla, and Michelle. And today we're going to be going over the stories that we've worked on um, since we last spoke to you about a month ago. And so, Paulina, we'll go ahead and kick it off with you. You did a story that was very relevant um, with regards to our media industry that we're in right now. You did a story in Oscars and kind of the um, underrepresentation of different folks in the industry. Do you mind telling us who, um, how you went about putting that story together? And more, more importantly, uh, what angle did you bring? Yeah, so right before the Oscars, um, I came out with a video that talked about the lack of diversity that the Oscars has traditionally had, especially in acting roles. And I came up with that idea because a few years ago, there was the Oscars So White movement, um, really pioneered by a lot of um, African-American actors and actresses in the industry. And recently I saw an article about the lack of Asians and the lack of Latinx actors and actresses as well, both in front of and behind the camera. And so I really wanted to explore that. I, um, the Academy website had a full list of all of their winners from the very first Academy Awards. And it is very striking to see um, the lack of diversity, especially in front of the camera. And it was very important to me, especially being a person of color in this industry and um, seeing so many people uh, here at Berkeley who are also identifying as person of co people of color and wanting to go into this industry as well. Thanks so much for that. Um, uh, as as uh, we often do with Off Script, we'll be posting the links to the stories that we discuss um, online as well. And so moving on over to Anna. Anna, you did two stories for us. The first one was on Chinese New Year. You talked to students on Sproul about how they celebrated you, gave them a fun um, true, true or false uh, test, and also you did a second video about the Equal Opportunity Program, um, similar to uh, uh, what Polina explained. Um, how did you go about finding the folks to speak to in those interviews, and also um, what did you gather from that experience? Um, yeah, so for my Chinese New Year video, I wanted to do like a more fun video on, you know, Lunar New Year that was coming up. So I went on Sprawl and I asked people like how they were celebrating Chinese New Year and like what um, their favorite parts of, uh, of Chinese New Year was. And for the EOP program, I actually interned at the EOP office and they were telling me about how like half of the first generation students don't even know that a resource like EOP exists. So that's why I really kind of uh, wanted to highlight like their resources and the work that they do. And I learned <clears throat> for my video, I divided it into three parts, which represents the three department that EOP is made out of, um, which is academic counseling and um, peer or the peer internship, as well as the USP um, office. And like, I learned a lot from the, the program like while producing the videos like kind of the misconceptions that you or that people who of like people who um can use like the undocumented office even if they are like a DACA student or if they're not a DACA student so I just like learned how to um I learned not only more about the EOP program but just about producing in general. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that story, and thank you for sharing that story as well. We had a lot of folks under the EOP program, um, you know, express their appreciation for that being um, uh, articulated by Anna in the interviews that you did. Um, can you speak to more about um, who, who you spoke with and, and what did they tell you? I, I know you spoke with students, and also you spoke with staff at EOP. Um, what what did they um, bring to the to the interview? So f I spoke to three different people for um, the EOP interview. The first was a student intake intern who um, they're the first person who connects you to all the resources that you need for EOP. And they're the people who are interns um, that that kind of like run the office and like run the administrative work. And the second person I spoke to was the academic counselor. And they're the people who you could go to not only for academic support, but like financial support or just advice or if you need any personal advising. So they're a big part of EOP. And the third person I spoke to was a USP academic counselor. And um, 
for the EOP video, there was a lot of footage that like I didn't get to use, but they talked a lot about like the misconceptions of what people think that, or the misconception of what people think um, the USP office is. Like a lot of people are unaware that the USP office only helps like other students besides undocumented students. So I thought that was pretty interesting. All right, thank you again. And again, all these stories will be posted online. Kind of a side note to what EOP offers. I believe now uh, they have their uh, gown lending program um, going through the month of April. And so if you're a student and um, need need to borrow a gown, EOP is providing that. And so you can definitely check that out. We'll be linking it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and transition to Paulina, who's um, one of our co-news directors now. Um, congratulations on getting that role. You'll be taking on uh, uh, this role along with Paulina, um, next academic here. But you worked on two very um, in-depth stories. The first one uh, on a very highly publicized arrest of one of the students here, Luis Mora. And then you also worked on another story about texting and uh, texting while driving and then also uh, drinking while driving. And so can you talk about first um, how, how you got in touch with Luis and um, you entered his home. You you spent a, a, you know time with him in his class and at home. Um, what 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 did you take away from that experience? Um, yeah, well, Luis, um, I got in contact with him just by Berkeley's email system. Um, I was able to just type in his name and uh, find his email through that um, because he is a Berkeley student currently. Um, but hearing his story, I mean. I, a lot of uh, different news outlets reported on um, his experience with ICE and Border Patrol um, in San Diego because he was detained um, in San Diego at a border checkpoint. Um, and his visa expired um, a few years ago, um, but he decided that he wanted to stay in America because of the opportunities and education um, that he was getting. And he knew that that would be the best decision for him, even though his mom, um, you know, ended up going back to Ecuador, which is his country of origin. Um, and speaking with him, it made me realize just the extent of the deficiencies with the immigration system in America, um, which is definitely, I think, a topic of important, uh, important discussion for today, where, um, you know, a lot of people are discussing these things, discussing people being, you know, deported and raids going on, ICE raids recently going on on Berkeley's campus that um, you hear about a lot of undocumented students being um, sent back to their country of origin where, you know, it's unsafe. And um, it's it's heartening to hear that um, people are able to find refuge on our campus. Um, but at the same time, you know, these deficiencies need to be heard and this needs to be a topic that is still up for discussion among students, especially at Berkeley. Yeah, feel free to keep the mic with you. I know Um, that, that one was a simulator, so let's just be clear. No, right? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, how, how was that like? How was it at? It was a setup in astrology? Yeah, so um, UCPD is um, sponsoring this program done. It's called Unite. Uh, the, the organization is called Unite, and they started a program called the Arrive Alive Tour, where they go to campuses, they go to college campuses um, throughout the U.S. and, you know, raise awareness uh, to students about the consequences of their actions, you know, um, driving under the influence, especially in like college towns when people have their cars and they're going to their friends' houses and, you know, drinking a little bit too much and not realizing, you know, what's going to actually happen to them. Um, and the, and the serious, you know, background behind it, whereas like there's been, it's a very high death rate in America. And, you know, a lot of accidents happen because of drivers under the influence and it's a heartbreaking story to hear that you know this needs to change and so this program um, basically students got into this simulator that was set up on Sproul um, the UCPD brought this car and uh, they like had this VR headset and they would put it on students and they would sit in the car and kind of visualize what it would feel you know delayed reaction time different things consequences of driving under the influence um, they also tested out you know what it would be like to text and drive which is uh, definitely also another um, major issue that um, college students have when they're driving and they're distracted. And, and whatever photographers 
actually, uh, you didn't go through it, but I, th- I believe your cinematographer did, right? Yeah, so I, she, she, uh, <laughs> she was, um, she really, we had some um, moments where, you know, I would talk to the um, program directors and um, we had some off time. So the cinematographer decided she wanted to give it a go. And uh, yeah, she ended up crashing into a vehicle. <laughs> so, I mean, every, I think every student who tried to do it um, was so caught off guard at how, like really impaired their decision making time was and um it was just it was a fun experience to watch but to think that that happens in reality is definitely a sad reality so all right thank you for both of those stories again we'll be linked to them michelle uh, we can go ahead and uh, move on to you uh, before we wrap up um you did a live stream story on a protest that actually went quickly through campus you mm-hmm. know, talked about where it started how you got to where you ended and ultimately what were the demands that were made so it started right in front of Duanel and it went throughout Memorial Glade and I think it ended on Sproul Hall. We also went through Moffitt and um, the demands that were being made were for the divestment against um, the fossil fuel industry. Currently, the UC Berkeley region system and the Berkeley Foundation has over $2 billion worth of investments in the fossil fuel industry. So um, they were just calling for the di- the divestment against that. Yeah. And so, uh, where where did you go through campus, and ultimately, where did you end up, and and was there any significance in in uh, what they were demanding and, and raising? Um, I think they were just trying to pinpoint the most popular um, places on campus. So they also marched in front of the Campanile, um, Moffitt, um, Sproul, and. They ended in front of the Sproul administration board thing, and yeah. All right, I want to thank Michelle, Perla, Anna, and Paulina for joining us in our second installment of Offscript. Don't go anywhere yet. Um, after spring break, we'll be coming back with our last off script. Again, uh, bringing behind the scenes stories from in the field. You can find all of these stories on our Facebook page. We'll link it to you. And again, thank you to all of our reporters and, of course, our cinematographers and our editors who put these stories together. My name is Tomas Manglania, and you've been watching Off Script. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.